Thank you, Raleigh. Thank you, Yana. And thank you, Morgan, for having me. And thank you all for being here, especially early in the morning for uh, people on the East Coast and even earlier on the West Coast. I appreciate uh, the attendance. And we're going to be talking about the psychology of trading. So if you're looking for technical work, uh, this is not the, the slot to look for it. This is, this is about the psychology. It's about how you sabotage yourself and how to overcome some of the sabotages that you have in trading. I'll, do, I'll be doing this presentation, give you a three-minute uh, commercial, and then I'm going to be opening it up for, for questions and answers. So think about the questions you might want to ask during the uh, session. And if you have a burning desire to ask a question during the session, please do so. Uh, I might not get to it until uh, the end of the segment. Uh, 25 years ago, I worked as a coach for people in the performing arts and in sports. 22 years ago, a friend introduced me to the trading world and traders. What I found was that traders need the same kind of psychological coaching that performers and sports people do. I love the idea of working with healthy people in the mind who want to become healthier in the pocketbook. Since then, I've traveled all over the world to conferences, expos, and have done television and radio shows on the subject. Traders have inspired me to write 13 books on the psychology of trading and still manage to give me more material till this day. While people on Wall Street have been given a bad rap for their greed, my own experience with traders that I've worked with is completely different. I find traders to be among the most philanthropic people on the planet. Of course, this might just be the traders that I attract or traders who are willing to be the best they can be in all areas of their life. Just to uh, get to know just a little bit about you, uh, just tell me what you trade and how many years you've traded. I'd like to see that in the room. And uh, if you're a full uh, part-time trader, anybody that wants to share that information, please do so now for everyone in the group. I see a few people writing. Good. And as you're doing that, I will do my presentation. It has been said that good traders know how to generate profits, but that great traders know how to handle losses. Those of you who have, who have traded for many years know the great truth to be founded in this bit of market wisdom. Even novices know that the disposition of losses is much more important and the ability to generate profits. Naturally, the ability to take losses well without the ability to produce profitable trades is still a losing proposition. However, in comparative terms, the trader who can generate reasonable profits while knowing how to cope with and limit losses is the trader who will consistently outperform most other traders. Neuro-linguistic programmers, such as myself, Tell stories as example of what we're teaching. Sometimes a simple story can drive a point better than lessons or statistics. And by the way, an NLP is a modeler of success who passes on the knowledge from the person who's successful to the person who wants to be successful. A trader by the name of Beverly had the kind of life that most of us would envy. She never experienced hardship and the minor losses in her life didn't hang on to taunt her when she became a trader. Beverly worked at the Twin Towers. After 9-11, this incredibly profitable trader couldn't deal with even the smallest of losses in her trading. All losses that haven't been dealt with effectively in your life will affect your trading. Inasmuch as losses go with the territory of trading, they're unavoidable and inescapable. There's no trading system, method, technique, or approach which avoids losses entirely. More trade, trades you make, the more losses you'll have. The longer you trade, the more you'll be exposed to the greater probability of inappropriate management of losses. The effective disposition of losses should ideally be, in the beginning, a totally mechanical procedure. However, due to the fact that many trading approaches don't have mechanical rules for making loss, taking losses, there's always the danger that losses won't be cut short. This is precisely where trader personality comes into play. 
it's probably true that they're born losers. And while it's true that there are specific personality traits associated with a born loser, knowing these traits won't necessarily help us. By now, all but the most uninformed traders are aware of what qualities are important to trading success. But understanding the inner workings of certain trading behaviors may be, depending upon your orientation to the psychology of trading, essential to positive change. If you're a trader, you've experienced loss. The trick is in recovering from the loss quicker, stronger, and wiser. The alternative is to become so frightened of future losses that it impairs your trading, creating bigger and more painful losses, or to become pessimistic and depressed and lose confidence and hope. And Carlos says, the less you trade, the more you make money. Mark Nicholas, that's right. I work with Beverly on reframing her connection to the losses uh, that her friends, uh, losses that her friends and colleagues uh, um, as a result of 9-11. We also worked on transforming the terror of almost losing her own life. I'm happy to report she's now back to earning the profits she achieved before the terrorist attack, but has a new focus. And by the way, that took her over a year to do. She gives a percentage of her profits to those who have to face dreadful loss in the same in the name of those who were lost in the towers. Before we look at strategies for overcoming losses, we need to identify the many ways traders have found to create an environment of losses and see how many you can relate to. Reasons traders lose money in the markets. Plunge headlong into the markets with no plan of action. This is an excellent way money and to lose it quickly. Why make a plan anyway? Would you drive from New York to Los Angeles without a map or without a GPS when you're trying to get there in a week? You could. It could be exciting, and you might be lucky enough to reach your goal without too many errors, but each error will cost you some time. If you trade without a plan, your chances of success are slim to none. Yes, you may be one of the lucky few who hits it big the first time, but the odds are minimal. Without a plan, you'll find yourself buffeted about by the winds of chance, the opinions of others, the persuasions of newsletters and advisors, the panderings of brokers, and the bias of the media. Your responses will be whimsical. But the greatest danger is that you'll not learn anything from your behavior. If you're unaware of what you did wrong, the consequences of your actions won't be deadly apparent to you, and you might run out of money before you learn your lessons. What do I exa exactly do I mean by a plan? Here's my definition of a trading plan. Everything that you would have in a normal business plan, in other words, your financial information, that you would need for any entrepreneurial endeavor, including within this plan, you need a strategy, a methodology, which includes a set of indicators that permits a relatively objective evaluation of market entry and exit, as well as risk management. In other words, what's your theory? Why do you think you're going to make money? This could mean that you're following computerized trading system signals from a chart book, a newsletter, astrology, or a random number generator. Regardless of where the input comes from, it must be traded as relatively closely as possible and as often as possible. What I recommend is that you employ a mechanical trading entry system in the beginning and more flexible exit system later on. In other words, I advise against rigidity, against inflexibility following any plan, especially in the exit. But to stray from a plan, you must have a plan on the outset. Now, eventually, when you're consistent in following a set of rules for a period of time, you might be able to adjust your rules to include an intuitive filter. This is when you have approached the ranks of master trader, but I warn you, if you haven't handled your psychological issues, you should never go beyond a fairly mechanical plan. Too much information. Subscribe to and read as many publications as you can. Watch the television business news and follow consensus of opinion. This is a surefire way to get confused and lose money while you're doing it. You'll find that most of your best traders are not only contrary to what you have read, 
but also contrary to what you want to believe. If you follow a training advisor, do so without second guessing. Remember that the more opinions you process, the more confused you're going to get. Not enough capital. Start with a small amount of capital and build up. Wrong. The facts show that the less you start with, the less likely your odds are of success. If you don't have enough capital to sit through a string of losses, you're not going to be there to get on the big winner when it finally comes. Pick tops and bottoms. Tops and bottoms don't happen too often. Try to pick them. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. You can find seasonal lows and highs with a good degree of success. However, you're always best getting into existing trends and riding them. You're better off trading with the established trend as opposed to trying to pick up a change in the trend before it happens. Get out of a winner quickly and ride your losers. Many traders get anxious when they are in a profitable position. They have the urge to take the money and run before market takes them, takes it back from them. But when they're in a losing position, they're patient and remorseful. They get mesmerized into a state of no action, hoping that the markets will reverse the trend. They ride losers for a long time and exit profits quickly. This is another good way to lose money in the markets. Buy a better trading system. It's not the system that makes the profits, it's the trader. In the hand of a poor trader, a good system is useless. Spend more time developing yourself as opposed to your system and it will be time well spent. Simple and inexpensive systems often work best. Even now, <clears throat> and, and then you'll run across an expensive system that holds promise if you decide to buy it. And if you are convinced it's worthwhile, you must also make a commitment to trade it according to the rules. If you can't do that, don't waste your money in, uh, on the system. You'll find that over a period of time when you follow rules of any system, what's going to happen is something else will emerge. And what will emerge will be your system that you have uh, come up with as a result of being uh, committed to that, that system, the system that you're following. Spread your positions to, <clears throat> to avoid taking risks. This little trick rarely works. In fact, it almost often puts you into double jeopardy. It's just another way to generate commissions and losses. Action trading. Get into a trading from action. Most traders don't understand themselves, in fact. Most traders are uncertain about their goals in the market. They'll tell you that they're looking for profits, but their behavior will convey another message. Many traders trade just for the action because they are addicted to their adrenaline rush. Some traders enjoy telling their friends that they speculate in futures, and yet other traders trade just to legally satisfy a need to gamble. Trading for the wrong reasons. Finally, some traders trade just for the challenge. Although there's, there's probably nothing wrong with most of these goals, the fact is that most traders don't know that these are, in fact, their goals. They don't understand their motiv motivation, and in failing to do so, they can't direct their intellectual energy in an appropriate direction. Self-understanding facilitates attainment of goals by highlighting the best vehicle toward the desired end. Furthermore, the failure to understand oneself will obscure the reasons for losses. Hence, the learning process is either slowed down or totally ineffective. Since it's the function of losses to educate, the value of losses won't be fully effective if it's at all beneficial. Remember, trading is a trip of discovery about yourself, and the best way to learn about yourself comes from how you deal with losses. Not enough education. Most traders don't understand the markets. How could that be? Very easy. Most speculators are self-educated. They have either read a book, glanced over a book, or they have picked up their education along the way. 
This may suffice for a general understanding, but it won't tell you all you need to know. I believe that all traders should start with the Jesse Livermore, alias uh, Edwin Lefebvre book, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. This will give you a foundation of the markets. You'll learn such thing as how orders are filled, how the bid and offer functions, or used to function on the floor, and the, the role and function of different types of markets, etc. These are all important in the trader's repertoire since they make human error less likely and they promote a solid base of operational procedures. And it gives you an understanding of the pulse of markets. Disorganization. Many traders aren't organized. They have systems, indicators, charts, signals, newsletters, <laughs> quote machines, and hotline recommendations from various advisors. But few traders have coordinated all of these into an operational, organized, cohesive set of operating principles. Speculation and investing are a form of doing business. Success requires order and direction. Did you fly with a pilot who had no flight plan or safety checklist? I hope not. <clears throat> Excuse me. No rules after a drawdown. Many traders don't stay long in long enough. How many traders are able to emotionally accept more than three consecutive losses in, a, in the market? Many trading systems inherently require the person, personal and financial ability to sit through five or six or even eight consecutive losses and up to 25% dollar drawdown. It's during these periods of drawdown that most traders err. When you do have a series of losses, it's important to ask the question, is this within the parameters of my system? And have I been following my rules to the letter? Staying in the game too long. On the other hand, some traders don't know when to quit, when to admit that their system just isn't any good or they aren't using it correctly. Such traders fail to the tune of many dollars and they do so repeatedly. You need to know when your system isn't working and when you're not working. Believe risk is for other traders. It would appear that there are many trading systems, methods, and timing indicators which have profitable potential. Those who have developed and tested trading systems know that although profitable systems aren't easy to find, they do exist. But as the Zen philosopher said, every front has a back, and the bigger the back, the bigger the front. Simply stated, every mechanical trading system, no matter how well it performs in hypothetical testing, has its downsides. The greater the rewards promised by the system, the greater the risk exposure. The simple fact of the matter is that trading involves risk and that there's no system, method, or indicator which has ever been developed which does not entail risk. And we accept this as a fact of trading life. As strange as this may sound to you, many traders don't understand the true meaning of risk. They feel that risk is for other traders. Only when you can, you're controlled with the reality of risk and loss do they understand its full impact? Only when the threat of loss is real can they respond. There's so many traders that they, they filter every possibility of a loss. Of course, they're filtering every possibility of a gain. Trade without the necessary skills. After years of study, I have concluded that a trading system methods and indicators comprise perhaps 25% of the total equation for success. 15% is luck, and the remaining 60 depends upon the trader's response to the system and the markets. All traders aren't created equal when it comes to trading discipline. Some are more reactive than others, some more less, uh, some tense than others, some are too conflicted, others too sensitive, and, and some too detached. It's the response of the trader which constitutes the single most important variable in the equation for trading success. Too many traders lose in the market simply because they don't possess the necessary skills to trade effectively. 
If you want to become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, if you wanted to get an education that was going to give you a, a, a high salary uh, in, in that profession, how much is it going to cost you? You know, uh, if, if you go to any of the better schools, you're going to be paying twenty-five, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars a year to get your education, and yet people will come into the profession of of trading and say, "Oh my God, I have I have invested ten thousand dollars in education in in uh, to be a trader," and you know, say it as if it is a huge amount of money, and yet you want to make millions in this profession with you know, investing in a book or in, in, uh, in, in just a seminar. If you want to get to the top of the profession and do it in the fastest, most effective way, you're going to have to get an education. And the best educations cost money. The fact is that most traders have to learn to fail their way to success because they choose to take shortcuts that don't work, skimp on education, and, and overcome their issues. If they have the money, passion, and fortitude to get through this tedious, unprofessional induction into trading business, then they might be ready to make the right choices. Perhaps some of you can relate to Trader Charlie. Charlie was an instant gratification guy. He was successful at everything he ever attempted until he decided to become a trader. He purchased a proven system from a top trader for $50,000, and he hired another trader to educate him in the markets for an afternoon. At first, he thought he was the golden goose until he followed the system, uh, because he followed the system perfectly. He went through three drawdowns in a row. That was enough to rattle him out of being sure of the system and sure of himself. After that, he managed to do everything wrong. Okay, now let's look at methods for overcoming lost issues. And I'm going to need to take a tea break, so hold on. There are many methods to handle issues dealing with loss. We will first start with good behaviors to give you the skills and strength that help you to counteract the losing behaviors that I just outlined. They can't be developed instantaneously, but given the time that you need to develop them, they'll achieve results. Be consistent. Consistency covers a multitude of behaviors and includes everything from placing orders to entering by the rules to keeping your system data updated as required. Consistency is a quintessential aspect of all trading. In order to achieve consistent results, consistent behavior is necessary. If you don't follow a system with consistency, you'll never know whether the system works or not. You'll only have the hypothetical results and they'll not mean much to you. Consistency will give you the feedback you need in order to be successful. Whether the feedback is a profit or a loss, it's still important feedback, which relates directly to the behavior. You know, if you're doing, if you're following a method for three to four months and you're consistent about it, look what will emerge. What will emerge is what the better trades are for you, what the, the trades you should stay out of, and you'll improve on your system. Make it your own. Learn to develop appropriate emotions. Inappropriate emotions are the chief enemy of the speculator. Always boring from within, said Edwin LeFebvre, alias Jesse Livermore. Too much pessimism will cause you to get out, out too soon or to not when you should. And too much optimism will cause you to hold on when you should be getting out and possibly reversing position. Emotions can be controlled by the use of relaxation techniques consciously readjusting your internal and external focus. Be persistent. There are few traders who have the persistence to trade their system by the rules once they have experienced more than three consecutive losses. 
If you know your system, however, you'll know that it may take up to seven or eight consecutive losses before getting back on track. Persistence is the ability to go with the system through bad times as well as good. When I was in sales, and this was over 25 years ago, I would average two sales for every 48 rejections. Each rejection would lead me closer to those who would give me the sale. With this attitude, I earned more than 150000 per year when I was in the business uh, that many years ago. Contrast this with people sitting alongside me who were earning 30000 per year doing the same job because they weren't willing to accept rejection. And what I mean by uh, these people who would not re accept rejections, I was dealing with the biggest companies in the industry whereas they wanted to deal with smaller companies to get more yeses. And I was dealing with the true principle of what selling is. Selling comes from the word in Norwegian, selje, to serve. What I would do is serve the public by giving them what they were asking for. And I wasn't trying to push something down their throats. And because of that, I was able to get the bigger sales uh, over a longer period of time. Be honest with yourself. The eminent Russian philosopher Uspensky claimed that self-deception was the root cause of virtually all personal and interpersonal problems. When it comes to trading, he's most assuredly correct. If you can't be honest with yourself about every aspect of your trading, you refuse to break the rules of your system or if you don't break the rules, you'll do so under very well-defined circumstances. Self-honesty is one of the most valuable qualities a tra trader can possess. Learn from losses. Every trader has dealt with losses, whether they're trading related or not. Loss is at the heart of every painful experience in our lives, even the smallest one. If we reflect back, on all of the traumas and difficulties of our life, it becomes clear that most of these events were related to a loss. For example, losing a race at school is indeed a loss. Experiencing the death of someone you know is a loss of a relationship. And experiencing an embarrassed moment <clears throat> in front of others is a painful because it results in the loss of self-esteem. Even when we make choices such as moving to a new location, or changing jobs. The result is the loss of familiar faces and experiences. When these events are thrust upon us, they're even more painful. There are a variety of ways that we can perceive losses. They can be stepping stones to major breakthroughs. Losses can result in awakening of who and what we really are and can realign our values so that we remember that what's really important to us Basically, losses can be lessons and turning points in our life. Although the painful experiences are always low moments in our lives at the time they occur, when we look back at some of the greatest joys and successes of our lives, we can often, often connect to a loss. If you look for the silver lining in a loss, in most cases you can find it. When I have interviewed some of the best traders in the world, I always ask them about the roots of their great success. Nearly always they said that a big loss caused them to make the transition from being a mediocre trader to doing what it takes to become a great trader. I got into this business as a result of one of the greatest losses of my life and that was a divorce. What happened was I was married to someone who went through Vietnam and he was not willing to handle his psychological issues. And as a result of, a, of that, it turned into a divorce. I decided at that moment that I was never going to go through an experience like that without being able to help someone because I didn't have the uh, skills at that time. So I studied neurolinguistic programming, timeline therapy, hypnotherapy, gestalt therapy. I didn't know when I was going to use it. And I eventually became a coach for people in the uh, uh, performing arts 
and, and people in the sports industry. And then I was introduced to traders. But that was a great loss that got me to this profession. And uh, even though I would not want to go through that again, the fact is that it led me to something that I really love. So let's get back to Charlie, the instant gratification trader. I met Charlie through a client. At first, I didn't want to work with him because of his arrogance and self-righteous behavior. I suggested other people that would be happy to work with him. This made him want to work with me even more. His friend gave him some advice about how to approach me, but even with this, I insisted that he go through a few hoops before I would work with him. It took six months before I would set an appointment after which he said, I guess I've been working with you all this time and didn't realize it till now. And he was right. If he was going to get the best out of Charlie, he needed to allow me to coach him toward disciplining himself. Patterns of behavior continue indefinitely until they're interrupted. What it takes to interrupt a pattern is often something that gets our attention. For a trader, nothing gets his or her attention as completely as a major loss. If the pattern of expected trading performance is interrupted by a major loss, the trader has four options. Review the methodology. The first option the trader has is to look at his present methodology and make the decisions to make some changes. In this scenario, loss is then perceived as a lesson and an opportunity to improve. Treat losses as a necessary step. The second option is to treat loss as an important or necessary step in the achievement of one's goals. For a trader, this mindset would have responding to a loss by saying to himself, this loss is one more step toward getting the best possible overall outcome. Losses must happen on the way to gain. Therefore, this loss brings me one step closer to my next gain. This is particularly true for salesmen who know that they will receive a certain number of no's before they get a yes, just like the example I gave you before from my own experience. Carlos, how big should the population of trades, 20, 30, 40 trades, to determine what your strategy is, is profitable? Uh, Carlos, it depends upon the, the time frame for your strategy, if you're talking about swing trading or if you're talking about day trading. Uh, but on a general rule, uh, I would say at least 25 trades, and that is just uh, coming out of uh, something that I have, have uh, concluded over a long period of time. But it really depends upon the type of trading you do. I had a trader that was trading in and out 200 times a day, uh, and uh, he was an extremely profitable trader. And then there are other traders who trade maybe once a week. So it, it's uh, uh, if, if it's something like once a week, of course, you're going to have to go back in your data for a long time to back uh, test your trading uh, to make sure that um, the uh, this long-term trading has gives you the information that's necessary to make sure that it is viable. Okay. Receive negative thinking as the cause of a loss. The third option is to perceive a loss as proof that negative thinking behind it is the cause, i.e., trading is too difficult for me, or it's hopeless, or my system is no good, or my life is all about failure and loss. Observing this could lead to a different choice and therefore a new positive uh, direction. Then there's retreating, treating and giving up. The fourth option is the loss can also mean for some traders retreating submission to being a victim or just plain giving up. For many traders, <clears throat> when they reach this point of giving up, they're not only reaching this point of giving up on trading, 
but they're reaching a point of giving up on life itself as an entrepreneur. And that can put them into a severe depression. Trading is a trip of discovery about yourself. And if you don't overcome the obstacles that it takes to uh, become a trader, what will happen is you will go back into lead, leading a normal life for, what, for you and never um, addressing those deep psychological issues that you have that will never make you the joyful person that you could be. Here's a story about a trader who loved and lost. For a very long time, Stu was unhappy in his marriage. Stu's wife, Alma, was an entrepreneur who started up one business after another, only to leave them for another project when things didn't pay off immediately. She was in multi-level marketing. Then one day, after 10 years of marriage, Stu came home to find both him, his home and his savings account empty. Alma had moved on. What happened then to Stu trading life is typical of what happens to traders when they experience a great loss in their personal life. Once a steady, successful trader, Stu began to experience a cascade of losses in his trading. Because of the inner stress with which Stu was dealing, he wasn't able to put together the two events in his mind. The reason was that Alma's pipe dreams of great success had become for Stu the basis for his sense of security and support. Stu failed to realize that he had created his own basis of support through his resources and skills. With Alma gone, Stu felt as though the bottom of his world had given way. And his new insecurity made him question everything he did. Instead of the confidence with which he had once traded, Stu now questioned his signals and his decisions. The result was the creation of even more losses. Excuse me, tea break. So now let's look at strategy for uh, future losses, dealing with future losses. Use the loss as an opportunity to expand rather than having the loss deplete you for your resources and strength. So what can I do? For you, what can you do for yourself to change these conditioned responses that I call anchors? When a major loss takes place in our lives, we tend to associate certain parts of the experience with a particular loss and by extension to all losses. I call this the cesspool. These associations become anchors which are unconsciously tied to that experience. These anchors, when they reoccur in our lives, take us back immediately to the feelings and thoughts associated with the original experience. For example, when Patrick was a child, his father worked for a company that moved him on a regular basis. By the time Patrick had finally fit into his new school and made new friends and started feeling success in his new life, his entire world would come apart. It was time to move again. He lost everything he had worked hard to gain. The anchor for loss for Patrick was success and stability. As a trader, whenever his trading had reached a high stable level of profit, Patrick become, became uncomfortable. Without knowing why on a conscious level, Patrick was waiting to lose it all. His unconscious mind would then complete the pattern by creating the loss he was ex expecting. If every loss we have experienced in our lives has its own anchors, we'll soon be weighed down by negative anchors like Jacob Marley in Christmas Carol, who was eternally condemned to dragging around the ill doings of his life. You know, everything will remind us of losses and the painful feelings associated with them. Once those feelings take hold, we're in a state to create losses. What we must do is connect our current anchors from their old associations through the transformation of our present way of thinking. Carlos, I found in my testing that it takes at least 40 trades to have statistically valid sample size. Thank you, Willie, for, for putting that uh, in there. And 
what I have found is that uh, listening to other traders, uh, they will uh, say anything from 20 to 100 trades. So it depends again upon your particular style of trading. And if you're, uh, if you're trading in lowly style, uh, then uh, probably 40 is appropriate for you. So now let's look at disconnecting anchors for old associations. Be aware of loss associations. First, you have to be aware of things which you now associate with loss. If you think about it, you'll be able to uncover these anchors. They are the sights, the sounds, the things, the words, the smells which bring you down, which make you sad, which make you uncomfortable, and you have no rational reason for these feelings. Another way to uncover them is to recreate in your mind's eye the losses that, you're pain, that are painful to you and note the particular details that stand out for you, which ones seem to represent the experience. So what I would do is make a list, you know, start uh, from now and go back in time or start from the beginning of your life and come forward and write down every bad experience that you've had in your life. And then think about the loss that was associated with it. And think about the possibility of what you learned from it or you gained from it. Uncouple loss or anchors. The next step is to uncouple these anchors so that they aren't creating feelings of loss each time you encounter them. This can be done by replacing these anchors with new associations. For example, you associate December with losing money because you once lost a great deal of money in December and you find yourself repeating losses at that time of the year, you need to unlink that association. Close your eyes and imagine the most rewarding trade you can think of, one which will create a high charge of emotion in you. Now imagine that trade taking place in December. For this process to work, you must imagine it vividly and the emotional charge must be very high. The more you repeat the process, the more effective this process will be for you. In other words, you are creating a new anchor. And if you close your eyes, open them again. Install a new anchor. The last step is to replace the old negative anchors with new positive ones. Think back to a time when something really inspired or motivated you. A trading book you read, trade you mentored, the big lesson you learned, until you experience sensations that you feel good. And think of one word description that describes that feeling or emotion. Repetition is important to setting strong anchors so that you, all, you only use the one word description uh, and that will bring the desired state. Now what I'd like to talk about is levels of coaching to create transformation. All coaching is not equal. On a conscious level, this is what we're doing now. Actually, this particular uh, webinar came from one of my Winning Edge books. Now, if you read my books and uh, you listen to my, uh, my tapes and, and my CDs, uh, not tapes, CDs and DVDs, most of that will be on a conscious level. And if you read other people's books, they will be teaching you at a conscious level. If you listen to these workshops, they will be at a conscious level. But in other words, they're giving you good information. They're giving you good ideas. And for some people, one good idea, that's, what, that's all it will take for make, making all the difference in your trading. Then there is uh, coaching at a subconscious level. This is where neurolinguistics comes in uh, and his, hypnosis comes in and timeline therapy and hypnotherapy and gestalt therapy and all the other uh, submodalities that I do. Subconscious level coaching is where the deep rooted stuff uh, is. And this is what I do in my, my seminars and in my uh, private work. But then there's some even deeper stuff. And that is on the energetic and the spiritual level. Uh, and the superconscious level. But on the energetic and spiritual level, that's what I do in private work, and that is 
you know, when you have things that are repeated and repeated and you feel that, that uh, it's never going to go away. But this takes one-on-one -on -one counseling. Now, the superconscious level is what I do when people want, when, ha when they've cleared all of the issues and we want to plan for the future and program the future. It's important to understand that, you know, when you're looking for a coach, when you're looking for someone to work with, you understand that they can work at all of these different levels. And if it's just through um, listening to, uh, reading a book or listening to tapes, most likely it's not going to get to the deep, deep-seated issues. So now I'd like you to look at where your focus is. If you expect to find a disaster, you will. If you look for an opportunity, you'll find it as well. Your brain will focus on what you're interested in, what you value, and what you expect to happen. If you focus on something, it will become your reality, crowding out the other realities around you. If your focus is on positive outcomes, you have the intellectual and emotional energy to reach them. If your focus is on losses, you'll direct your energies there. When the energy from a tragic loss is used for positive change or positive outcomes, it can be used for healing from the loss. When the same energy is directed inwardly towards depression and pessimism, healing from the loss will not take place. Instead, that energy will persist, creating even more losses. So questions to ask yourself are, what results would I achieve if I were to trade my plan consistently without unnecessary losses? And what is it costing me by doing whatever it's necessary to overcome my issues? Now is an opportunity for you to ask questions. And what I have found in the past is when I ask people to ask questions and you know, I've, I've experienced this myself when going to seminars when people will say, um, you know, ask questions. All of a sudden, I can't think of a question to ask. So what I've done is I have some prepared questions. And I also have uh, questions that I can give, get out of a fishbowl. And while you're thinking of your questions, I can answer questions that I've been asked before because, you know, in, and being in this business for 22 years, uh, I probably have been asked almost every question. In fact, it'll be interesting to see if a person has a question that I haven't heard. Uh, before that, I'm going to go through my little commercial and uh, see if, uh, you know, some of this material would be good for you. I have my trading on target. Target Home Study course, and anybody that says they're from Traders Pub, uh, listening in on these tapes will get a $50 uh, special. This uh, course is normally $650. Uh, special special on this course uh, uh, will be $50 off. There are five modules in the course, uh, and any of those will be $25 off. Uh, the course consists of uh, 15 books, uh, business plan, took me 12 years to put that together. If you like this particular webinar, I deal with all the sabotage issues, fear of success, fear of failure, fear of being wrong. Um, and I have an evaluation and consultation with me on the phone. 14 pages, there's no wrong or right answer, it's just how you feel about it. And I can tell you exactly where your problems are going to be in trading or where they are in trading and what you have to do about it. There's CDs to get you up in the morning. There's DVDs and uh, a lot of material in this particular course. Now, I'm going to uh, just go through. There, those are two of the packages. And uh, for those of you who are uh, interested in higher learning, uh, the top performance seminar, and you have to get information from me by calling me. And, this, uh, and then I have a master class coming up in February. Uh, for those of you who are early enrolled, it would be $300. And this is how to get in touch with me. And this is the time to open it up to questions. And Doug has prepared a question for me. 
how much have you traded? How much have you traded recently? What has been your average return, average return recently, etc.? Doug, I am not a trader. Uh, I have traded, and I've traded Forex. And uh, when I traded, I was successful at it. Uh, what I did was uh, I had thousands of, uh, of strategies in my files. I took out a simple strategy of someone that who uh, made uh, good profits at the time. And, you know, I hate to say what, uh, what my, my average return was, but uh, because, because I was only in it for about three or four months. But I, I, if I had been, cons been consistent with what I was doing, my average return probably would have been about 30% for the year. But that's basing it on only uh, three, four months of trading. Uh, I am kept extremely busy with what I do as a trader's coach. I don't teach trading, although I know a lot about it because I work with some of the best traders in the world and I have all their strategies, so I understand their strategies, and uh, that's how I help, I help people through the discipline part. <laughs> Stephen, none of your business. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, I'm going to ask myself another question. While you're asking uh, questions, and if you don't have questions, I have uh, questions that people would ask me. How can traders improve on their discipline? Discipline for traders is about having a predetermined strategy for entering and exiting the trade and sticking to that strategy. Discipline for traders starts before they even start to think about trading. It's all about a mindset for allowing conditioning to keep agreements and following through on what you have planned in all areas of your life. If you make it okay to break agreements, then you make it harder for your neurology to support you in keeping your agreements in the process of becoming a trader. You need discipline in the overall plan you have for your trading career. You need discipline for reading and studying trading. You need discipline to come up with a trading business plan and be able to follow it. So how can you improve your discipline in trading? Is to improve your discipline in life. Follow through on your agreements. Make sure that you are on time. Don't make an agreement that you can't keep. Another way to improve your discipline is to take on agreements in the past that you have broken, such as exercise, a diet, learning a new language, organizing and cleaning. If you can't or will not discipline the activities in your life, then you don't expect to receive the reward of consistent profit uh, in trading. For the, from the time that Joe was introduced to trading, he knew it was what he wanted to do in his life. However, he was a poor student you could never count on him to follow through, and he was always late. Each step of the way was painful for Joe. He couldn't get past a few pages of a trading book. He just wanted someone to give him a strategy that worked. Joe's uncle was willing to teach him his strategy, but Joe found it too difficult to understand what he was talking about. His uncle recommended Sonny Harris's book, Trading 101. Then he came to the Traders Expo. This was where I met him. He purchased a strategy that basically beeped him to get in and out. This didn't work for him. Joe did make it as a trader. His father left him with half a million, so Joe hired a trading coach to teach him what he could have learned out of a book and held his hand through the whole process, but he could not get beyond the simulation. He called and asked for my help. I would not take him on as a client until he became disciplined in his life. Here's the advice I gave Joe. Put together a business plan. Make a plan for each week with tasks that you are going to accomplish. Include in your plan some activity that you have never done before and do what it takes to become proficient at it. He chose golf. Each night, plan for the next day with a priority list. Check off at the end of the day what you have accomplished. Give yourself a point system that has rewards attached to your accomplishing your task. Have a punishment and reward attached to the following rules in trading. Punishment can include having to quit for the day, giving service and time to charity. Rewards can include a special dessert, new toy, massage. That's always my reward. 
Attach an audible signal to your computer for when an opportunity is coming about. What good trading is <clears throat> is the best strategy in the world if you can't follow it. Discipline is the key to earning consistent profits and enjoy the process of being a trader. Okay, so that was one of my prepared questions and answers. Okay, what advice do you have to help traders transition from sim trading to live trading? Uh, one of the things that, that I say to people about uh, the transition is, number one, uh, start trading real money without trading uh, on, online. In other words, you take two uh, stacks of $100 in $1 bills, and this is real money. I'm not talking about monopoly money because we have a connection an emotional connection to real money. Uh, have one of the hundred dollar hundred dollar stack be for the for the um, uh, the markets, and one of the hundred dollar stack be for you. See where you are at the end of the day. Uh, you have to determine uh, how much each dollar represents to you. So that's one way. The second way is to uh, when you're when you're sim trading. Give it a point system on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being best, uh, and only trade the, uh, the, top, uh, the top numbers, 9 and 10, uh, in, uh, in real money. And uh, see how that works for you. Now, mark down all of the time that you have an emotional response to that, uh, uh, that type of trading. And if the emotional response is uh, so de debilitating that you can't trade it, you better call some trader's coach. Not a trading coach, but a trader's coach. Yana, if you want to get the special from Adrian, you can call 919-851-8288 and mention Trader Pub to get the discount. Yes. Thank you, Yana, for putting that up there. Phone number is wrong, 8518288. Uh, yeah, that's my right phone number. Uh, somebody uh, wrote that. Uh, let's see. Doug, with access to some of the best traders and how they trade, clients you mentioned, combined with your expertise, why not trade and or teach others to trade? Because I don't have the passion that's necessary to, uh, to be a trader. Now, people. People think just because you like to trade and just because you can make money at trading uh, that everybody has that, uh, that passion. I don't have it. Uh, to me, it's like watching wet paint dry. Uh, it was exciting for me to trade for a few days, then it became ho-hum, and then I actually didn't like it. Uh, I love what I do. Uh, I, I, I can watch a person in hypnosis for hours, and that would bore the hell out of some, some people. What I do and how I, what I'm good at is working with people on the psychology of, of trading and improving their performance. Now, you, you can see um, people in the, um, in, in the sports arena, uh, coaches in the sports arena, and some of the coaches have never done it themselves and yet they're exceptionally good coaches, especially the psychological ones. I'm not talking about the technical ones. Uh, when someone like Tiger Woods wanted to, uh, to overcome some of the stuff that he did, he called upon several coaches, psychological coaches. He didn't need someone to teach him technique. And uh, the coaches that he chose never, uh, never were golfers, I mean professional golfers. Okay, I don't see any more questions. I've got 12 minutes left. So what I'm going to do is ask myself a, a, an unprepared uh, question from my fishbowl. Okay, how can I stop myself from becoming panicked in my trading? Uh, the reason you're becoming panicked is because at some point in time you created a picture that created a voice uh, that created an emotion. Now, the picture you created is maybe 
you seeing yourself losing the money that you have in your bank account that you really worked hard, very hard uh, to create. And uh, then what happens is you have a voice in your head. Uh, suppose you're just a gambler. Suppose you lose more money. And uh, then what happened is an emotion came up of fear. Now, you were in charge of the picture. You were in charge of the voice. And you're in charge of the emotion. So if you can be in charge of all of that, then you can be in charge of the picture that you choose. Seeing yourself as a successful trader, seeing, hearing the voice in your head, I have a system or methodology that I believe would work because I, I have tested it and I can follow it. And uh, repeat that as a mantra in your head over and over and over again. And uh, have a mental rehearsal of seeing a picture, hearing a voice, feeling an emotion. You are in charge of your emotions by the choices that you make in the pictures and the words you say. So that's how you overcome become, uh, panic. Of course, if you have some really deep-seated issues, you're going to need some help. Carlos, what is your reasoning with traders who are profitable on sim trading and lose money on live trading? Uh, the reason people lose money in live trading is because of fear, fear of success, fear of failure, fear of being wrong, conflict issues. Uh, you know, for, for a lot of people, when you, when you have developed, let's say, $50,000 in your account, and that is, there's an attachment to that. There's an attachment to your retirement fund, your children's education, to your vacation money, to the uh, responsibility that you have to your family. Uh, for that money, and you attach that money to uh, to your emotions. If you go into the uh, restaurant business, the, uh, the clothing business, any kind of entrepreneurial endeavor that you go into, uh, you're going to have to have inventory for your business. You're going to have to put a certain amount of money into that business. You have to think like an entrepreneur. And an entrepreneur puts money in the investment and doesn't attach it to the emotional uh, um, money that he has saved. At least that's what he should do. So until you can detach your emotional attachment to that money, you're going to still have the problem of that transition between sim and live trading. Okay, I don't see any other questions, so I am going to do uh, a special special just for the people in the room because you have come here and uh, you deserve a special special. Now, I sell my course every day at $650. Uh, I'm going to give a special special to those people who send me an email and give me your phone number, and I will call you and just give you an amount. Uh, Traders Pub doesn't require me to give them a kickback, so you get the kickback that they would give, get if they required me to give a kickback. So you will get the special special that Trader Pub uh, will offer you because of you being here at their, their um, event. But remember, I need your phone number and the best time to reach you, and you have to email me to get that special uh, special price. I'm not going to give you any kind of a commercial. If you want a commercial, go to my website, tradingontarget.com. Oops, and I'm just going to go back here, uh, adtograi at gmail.com. That's what you write to. You give me your phone number and the best time to reach you, and I will call you back. Uh, I do it that way because uh, I, I can't have 10 calls coming in at one time. And I'm going to up the ante, and what I'm going to do is uh, give the first three people that I see on my email list, even if I don't get to you right away, first three people, I'm going to give you a bonus and a significant bonus. Uh, above and beyond the, the special special price. Okay, uh, 
Thank you, Yana, for, for uh, displaying that. And for those people that are listening in, you still will receive that $50. And for that, you can call us or you can write me. Or if you order online and you say you're with Traders Club, we will take that uh, $50 discount off. OK, um, any more questions? I still have uh, seven minutes, so I'll, I'll pull a question out of my fishbowl again. What is the best way for a trader to deal with his family and friends? Well, in the process of becoming a trader, I suggest you don't tell anybody about it because uh, most people out there equate trading, if they understand it at all, with gambling. And they will, uh, they will try to, because they're nice people, they will try to convince you that this is not a good idea. Uh, even people who are um, professional traders, very often they don't tell people. Uh, they say they're investors, uh, they invest in you know, uh, uh, properties and that sort of thing. Because if you're extremely good at what you do, they're going to ask for you ask for your advice where to trade, and that's not usually a good idea to give people advice. And uh, the other thing, if you're very good, they'll ask you to teach them. And you know, unless you're that uh, benevolent, it's usually not a good idea to uh, teach other people unless you want to come into the profession. Uh, now, as far as dealing with your family, uh, I would suggest that uh, with your family, you uh, you sit them down, you show them your business plan, you show them uh, how you plan to make this business work, you show them a strategy, you show them your results of your, your strategy, and you show them your uh, your uh, contingencies for everything that can go wrong, everything that can go right. In other words, you need to build confidence in them. And when you build confidence in them, what's going to happen is you will build confidence in yourself as well. OK, I've got five minutes. Let's see if I can answer another question. Uh, how do I know if I'm a trader or, uh, or just a gambler? Uh, you'll know by your results. If you have tested your strategy, and uh, the strategy indicates that you should have a certain amount of profit if you followed your rules, and you're not making that profit, uh, you're either sabotaging your efforts, and if you're, you're losing money, you're a gambler. Very simple. OK, I think I could ask myself another question. Uh, why does a trader need a coach? A trader doesn't need a coach unless they want to become more successful in the fastest possible way. And, uh, when you think of the athletes and the, I mean, I work, I worked as a coach for a professional uh, pianist, and I can play chopsticks very poorly. Uh, when a person wants to psychologically overcome performance anxiety that keeps them from being, from sabotaging them themselves, they work with somebody on that to uh, create the fastest and most effective way to become successful in the shortest period of time. OK. Let's try another one. Uh, how do I choose my clients? Uh, what I do in choosing my clients, and I, I, I only choose 12 a year now. Uh, I used to have 24 a year. Uh, first of all, you have, a, have, to have to have a system or methodology. You have to take the trader's evaluation. Uh, I have to feel comfortable with you, and I have to feel like I can give you great value, and you have to uh, feel comfortable with me. It's very important that when you're working with uh, someone who is coaching you in life or coaching you in trading, that you feel a rapport with them, you feel comfortable with them. Oh, gosh, I have three minutes. Let's see if I can do another one. Um, when should I be trading and when should I not be trading? You should be trading when you're physically, mentally, and emotionally uh, in tune with yourself. And you should do that by comparison for when you are in tune with yourself. And you should not be trading when uh, you have gone through a series of losses and you're psychologically down. You have to pull yourself back up. OK, in conclusion, 
The fact is that, yes, 90% of the people lose in this market, but if you do the right things by having a, a strategy that you have tested and take care of the psychological issues that you have, you can be at 10% that make money in the markets. And if you want to become a master trader, what you need to do is go beyond that and take care of all your psychological issues, add an intuitive indicator. And uh, I've met work with many people who have just started up and have gone to that uh, level. One of the ways we could tell whether uh, you have it or not is through the trader's evaluation. And you can get that in my, uh, my trading course. And I spend 20 to 40 minutes, depending upon how screwed up you are, on uh, telling you exactly what, what you need uh, psychologically to become a master trader. Thank you, Traders Pub. Thank you, Rowley. Thank you, Yana. Thank you, uh, everyone that has put this event together. I really appreciate everyone attending. And remember, remember, I have a special special for those people who are in the room right now. You have to give me your phone number, the best time to reach you. And if you're one of the lucky three, you get an extra bonus. Uh, I, there's one minute. You can go and uh, take a break for one minute. And I'm going to say goodbye to everyone. Thanks for being here.